Hello designers. The purpose of this video is to walk you through from start to finish how to create a brand new emoji using the template that I provided for you. So thank you 6A for being uh, such a willing participant in this instructional video. First you go to your class, you go to classwork, you go to unit one digital literacy and you look for emoji illustrator template. Click on it to open it and it's going to say it's a PDF. It's not a PDF. Chrome just can't understand what an AIT file is and so it gives you a PDF preview. Don't panic. I mean remain calm. Click on the three buttons in the top right corner and it will say more actions when you hover on it. And then you just click on open in new window. Then what you'll get is another preview, but at least this time you have a button that says download and that's what you click on. Click on download. If you look in your finder, that's what it looks like. Double click on it and it opens in Illustrator, untitled. And it's an AI file. So it is a template. So it includes things that I wanted to be in there for you, but you get to customize it. You save it with your own name. Okay. And you'll notice that I've created one layer that's called designer notes. And I want you to follow these to the letter. Okay. So the first instruction is use the layers. And that's what I'll show you how to do. This is the artboard for your emoji. It's 75 by 75, which is the size of a standard post-it note. Keep your all your work within that, okay? And this green crosshair here is the very center. It won't show up in your final picture. You might not need it, but maybe it'll be helpful. Keep it simple. You've already done that. You've made two sketches. You've chosen the one you like the best. That's the one you're making now. And later on, we'll get to four, five, and six, okay? So I'm going to switch to the layer that says outline. By the way, if you can't find your layers, it's this little stack of crackers here. But you can also find it in Windows under Layers. And there's a keyboard shortcut, F7. I want to make sure I'm on that one. Um, by the way, this designer notes is not permanent. You can make it invisible or put it back. You can lock it um, to prevent any changes happening to it. All right, right now I'm on Layer. And uh, I'm just going to go with Tradition. I'm going to make a round emoji. So I go over to the toolbar on the left and I find the rectangle tool. I hold it down and I'll get some other options. The one I, the one I want is the ellipse tool because I'm going to make a circle. A circle is an ellipse. I learned from Illustrator. And I'm going to hold down the shift key because I want a perfect circle. There it is. Now I don't want it that color so I'm going to change the colors first. So first thing I want to do is, while it's selected, look over here on the left. You can see that it's filled with white and the stroke is black. I don't want any outline on it. I don't want a stroke around it. So I'm going to click on that and then go down here and choose none. That means there's, there's nothing around the fill. It's, 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 a, it's a circle without an edge. Um, so to speak. And then while I've selected, while I've still got it selected, I can go to the top and click on these color presets. And I just want this one. Now, if you don't see this preset or you don't see this toolbar, please go to the top right corner and choose Essentials Classic from the drop down menu. It's, uh, it's a good one, that uh, toolbar. All right, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go back to my layers and I'm going to lock that one because I don't want to make any mistakes. Okay, but I do need to make a copy of it. So while I'm using the selection tool, I'm going to click on it once and go Command C. And then I'm going to lock this layer. And then I'm going to go to Extras 1 because I'm going to add something to this. And I don't have a name for it yet. So I'm just going to use Extras 1. And then I can go Command V and paste this here. All right, what I want to end up with is um, an arc or a half circle. So I'm going to show you one way to do that. It's a very simple way. Click back on the uh, ellipse tool and I get the same drop down menu with different kinds of shapes. And this time I want the rectangle tool. I want it to bisect that. So that'll do. And then I'm going to select both of them just like that. And then I'm going to go use my Pathfinder tool. Pathfinder is over here in the toolbar on the right side, but if it doesn't show up there for you, you can always go to Window. These are in alphabetical order. 
and there's Pathfinder. Pathfinder does all kinds of things, and you can get an idea from the picture and from the name. What I want is minus front. In other words, I want to get rid of everything in front of it and behind it, leaving behind only what's what's not covered up by the thing in front. And that's what I got. That's what I wanted. Now I'm going to copy, paste, Command V. And uh, I want to make this smaller. So one way I can do that is to go to the transform tool or the transform window and change the size of it here just by push putting in different numbers or just to make life easier and make this video shorter for you I'm going to do this make it a little smaller all right now what I want let me change the color of that just to make life a little easier for you. What I want is I want the yellow. I don't want what's covered up by the pink. So I'm going to go back to Pathfinder. Use the minus front tool again. Now I have this. What I want it to be, though, is black. So there's black. And this is going to go over here. It's not quite the right size. So I'll stretch it out. And that's good for now. I'm making a pair of headphones. So I would like a rounded rectangle that are about this big. These are the old style, old school. Oops, what have I done? What have I done? Okay. The most important tool is the selection tool, and you'll use it a lot. And so if you like using keyboard shortcuts, you might want to use V for selection tool. And that's what I should have done before I tried to move that. I'll move that around here. Uh, is it level with the other one? Well, it sure is now. Yes, it is. All right. And let's see. Good. Now, if I wanted to, I could put all these together like this and either group them under object, go to group, or I can um, combine them with Pathfinder and now they're one shape, which is kind of handy. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So I go back to my layers and I lock that and then I go to the face layer. Actually, before I do that, let me do one more thing. I can rename these layers just by double clicking on it and uh, typing in the name like that. It's still locked, I can't change it, but I can change the name. Now I wanna go to the face, I'm gonna keep it simple again. I'm gonna make uh, a little rectangle like this. Command C, Command V. Like that, Command C, Command V. And that's gonna be the mouth. And I'm just going to stretch it out like this. Take a look. It's not exactly what I want. A little bit robotic for me. So I'm going to use a tool that's kind of fun, has all sorts of uses, called the Puppet Warp Tool. You can find it sometimes hidden underneath the Free Transform Tool. And what it does is it puts all these little points on it, and it's almost as if it were Play-Doh, and you could pull it and stretch it. I'll zoom in a little bit. and to change play, to change it, you just grab it and move it like that. But this is just moving it up. So what I need to do is use the pin and pin some part of it like there that I can then pull and I can move it around. So let's see, let's do that. That looks satisfied. That is a satisfied looking face. And I do believe I'm done. Okay, now I need to save this. So that's easy. You can probably guess how to do that. Click on save. And make sure the name looks like this. Your home room underscore first name. <laughs> underscore design. That's more for you than me, but still do it. Okay, good habit to get into. It's an emoji and uh, you don't have to fill in the rest. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. Save. Do I want to replace the one that I did before? Yes. When I practice? Yeah. Now, 
it's a, still an AI file. That's like uncooked cookie dough. You can't really do anything with it yet. We have to bake it. We have to render it. So what we're going to do now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to export it. But let's take a look at instruction number five. Toggle the visibility of the designer's notes layer to off before you export this emoji to a PNG. Click on the eye in the designer notes layer to make it invisible. Here's the designer notes layer. Click on the eye. It's now invisible. It's still there. I can turn it back on, but it will not be part of whatever I export. Okay. Then I go to export, export as. I choose PNG from this menu and click export. And please make the resolution 150. It's a little bit better than screen quality, uh, not as high as 300, obviously. And then make sure that the background is transparent so that no matter what background your emoji is in front of, um, it's, it's the only thing we see is the emoji. Whereas if we do this, it'll always have a white background or always have a black background. So make sure it's transparent. Click OK. It exports it wherever you said you want it exported. In this case, I put it on my desktop. And there it is. Ta-da! Congratulations, you just watched the world premiere of a new emoji being born. Um, you can send flowers. Uh, have fun making your emoji.